<clears throat> so we'll just start off then. So we, we ended up, uh, we started talking about um, how buffers uh, work and, um, you know, either adding some base or adding some, uh, essentially we, buffers are, are made with weak acids, weak, weak bases. Uh, we, we don't make buffers with strong acids. Uh, simply because if, if we put a strong acid in and it completely ionizes, um, if I put a, a strong base into the solution, well, there, there's nothing to neutralize that. So it's not the, the case with weak acids, weak bases. So uh, we make buffers with weak acids, weak bases, uh, so that if there's an introduction of an acid or a base, uh, that it can be neutralized. We can uh, maintain the uh, uh, hydronium concentration by the way that the reaction is going to shift. So what we're going to talk about today then is what we call the Henderson Hasselbach equation. So the Henderson Hasselbach equation, uh, if we look at the Ka, um, so Ka is, we all know it, um, and let me put the reaction. I'll put the reaction first here before we do that, just to remind ourselves. We've already, we've already talked about uh, our general reaction. So we have uh, our acid, plus we have our water, which is just going to be liquid. Uh, then we get H3O plus plus, um, and this we're going to refer to again as a salt. So we have our, our acid, and then we have our salt concentration here. So the Ka is simply um, concentration of hydronium, concentration of salt over the concentration of Acid. So this isn't this isn't anything that we that we haven't seen um, before, right? Um, so looking further into this now, uh, if we take a look at the concentration of our uh, acid, right? Concentration of our acid is equal to uh, the Ka times. Uh, let's see, Ka. If we rearrange this formula, uh, Ka, I'm going to have to clean this up as well. Concentration of acid over concentration of salt. Right. But I I'm going to clean this up just a little bit. I'm not, uh, for understanding Henderson Hasselbach, uh, I kind of need to just clean this up a little bit. So we're going to say, uh, again, we'll just say, uh, I'm just cleaning this up and just rearranging it uh, so that we can understand this a little bit better. And we'll say that it's equal to the Ka times the concentration of acid over the concentration of salt. So I think for understanding this, this, this here is probably a little bit better uh, to understand what's going to happen when we talk about uh, what we're going to do here. So if we take this here and we take the negative log of both sides of this, right? We take the negative log of both sides of this, is we're going to get the negative log for the concentration of hydronium <laughs> equals um, negative log of the Ka, and that we did already talk about, minus the log of our concentration of acid over concentration of salt. So this is if we take the negative log of um, this equation here. Well, now we kind of have to think about it. If we, if we take a, a closer look at this, well, we already know what the negative log of H3O plus is. 
the negative log of H3O plus is simply just pH, right? Negative log of H is pH. And we discussed this the other day, and we said, well, <coughs> if pX is equal to the negative log of x, then the negative log of the Ka is pKa. So pH is equal to the pKa minus the log concentration of acid over concentration of our salt. <clears throat> but we're not quite done with, with uh, Henderson Hasselbach just yet uh, because we're going to take a, just a little bit closer uh, look at this portion here. So um, understanding logs, right? Just understanding logs a little bit here. Uh, so if we take the negative log of 1 over 10, this is equal to positive 1, right? Taking the negative log of 1 over 10 equals positive 1. Well, if we take the positive log of 10 over 1, this is also equal to positive 1. So just by using the reciprocal value here, we can change this negative sign into a positive sign, and we take the reciprocal value, and we're still going to get positive 1. So Henderson-Hasselbach equation ends up becoming the pH is equal to the pKa plus the log of, and we're going to do the reciprocal value here, concentration of salt over concentration of acid. And this is, oh, this is our Henderson Hasselbach equation. Right. So when we're looking at um, when we're looking at polyprotic acids, you know, uh, diprotic, uh, triprotic acids. Um, when we titrate those, right, uh, it's what we call the titration. So in a titration, and let me see, this is put, we'll put pH here, <clears throat> and we'll just start with, I'll make these a different color. All right, we've got one, two, three, four, five. Uh, generally, when, and I'll make a, a smaller one, you know, I probably should make two. There's a second graph here. So when we titrate <coughs> um, monoprotic acids, uh, we end up with a certain type of uh, uh, graph when we're looking at that. So we end up with a graph, um, something like something like this, you know, uh, but for, you know, and this is, well I'll put monoprotic, uh, monoprotic weak acid. All right. Well, our graph looks different when we're, when we're looking at polyprotic acids, uh, diprotic, triprotic acids, is that our graph when we titrate, and what I mean by titration is <clears throat> in a solution, in a flask, if you haven't seen a titration, uh, this is a bad drawing of a flask here, but uh, here's a flask, and usually we have what's called a, a, a burette, and inside here we'll just say, we'll put uh, 
base in here and we'll put uh, acid in here. And what we do essentially is when we titrate is we're, we're trying to neutralize some solution to calculate some information about it, right? Um, we don't know the concentration of something. Either I either know the concentration of base and I'm trying to figure out the concentration of acid, or I know the concentration of acid, I'm trying to figure out the concentration of base. And what we do is we, we titrate these solutions but when we do it with diprotic, triprotic acids, is we get a much different we get a much different graph, right? Um, so what happens here is uh, this region in here, this is what we call the half equivalence point, right? Our half equivalence point, this is our buffer region, right? And then we have something right here uh, that this would be considered our, our PI, or this is what we consider our ISO electric point but each time we come each time we get near flat like here's another pka value right here's another like another uh and our i'm sorry so this let me mark it here i should mark it in a in a different color again i'll put it in green is that this region right in here this is what we consider our pKa. I'm going to put pKa1, right? Because we did talk about different Ka values. We had, you know, we can go Ka1, uh, Ka2, Ka3, depending um, if, if we had a diprotic or triprotic acid, right? So right in this region in here is what we consider our pKa. So here's the peak. Here's another pKa value. So we say pKa2, and here's another, you know, pKa value say pKa3, and inside of these here is that this is what we consider our buffer region. And why is that the buffer region? Because remember how buffers work. Buffers are, are resistant to a change in pH, right? So for a buffer to work, so here we could say this, this um, what's this pH right about here? We'll say this is about, um, I don't know, We'll say that, and it's not to scale or anything. We'll say the, we'll just say, we'll just call that buffer region. I don't know, three point two or something. I don't know. And generally, the generally the, our buffer region is one pH higher and one pH lower. So the highest our buffer is going to get to is, is four point two. Lowest it'll get to is two point two. If this was our um, buffer region here and say, let's say this was uh, eight, uh, that this buffer region here could go up as high as nine. Uh, it can go down as low as seven. And that's kind of our buffer region between nine and seven pH. Uh, other than that, uh, this is, you know, this here, that's not a buffer region. So we have these, these buffer regions here uh, where we're seeing that. And at the half equivalence point, at the one half equivalence point, right? Uh, this is where the concentrations of the acid and the concentrations of the salt are equal. So, at the half re at the half equivalence point, this is where the concentration of acid is equal to the concentration of our salt, right? And something interesting happens here when these concentrations are the same. If you remember anything about logarithms, if I take the log of one over one, well, the log of one over one is zero. The log of one over one is simply just zero. So if these two 
are equivalent at that half reaction point, well, then the pKa is equal to the pH at the half equivalence point at the half equivalence point. So when those concentrations are equal, then the pKa is equal to the pH. So um, I would like you guys to remember this. So this is kind of going off the book. The, the book didn't really discuss this part here, but, uh, but I, I'm going to show you this part. So um, this portion is not contained in the text, but you're still going to be tested on it because I'm, I'm covering it in lecture here. So understanding logs a little bit better, right? Uh, is when we take the log of 10 over 1, if we take the log of 10 over 1, uh, this is going to be plus 1. If we take the, and I'm going to put positive here, if we take the positive log of 1 over 10, we get negative 1. So the log of 10 over 1 is positive 1. The log of 1 over 10 is negative 1. And the log of 1 over 1 is simply just equal to 0. So knowing that information, right? You have to be able to look at concentrations and apply this information. Because some of these some of these calculations can be done without the need or the use of a calculator. Right? If if I'm asking you to calculate um, the pH or the pKa of some solution of some acid and I give you these concentrations, uh, you should be able to, without using a calculator, make the calculation. And I'll give you an example that if I said, uh, if I have, we'll say 0.25 molar acid, uh, and let's actually use a weak acid here. So uh, we'll say 0.25 molar acetic acid, and I have 0.25 uh, molar acetate. Well, <clears throat> the log of the salt concentration over the log of the acid concentration, right? Look at this. Isn't this one to one? Isn't this ratio one to one? So if I give you the some and let's say the pKa is uh oh what's the pKa of I think it's four point seven six. So the, the, the pKa is four point seven six. If I just simply if I give you this information and I ask you what the pH is, well, it's pretty simple that the pH is simply equal to 4.76 because these concentrations are the same. So let's look at the, let's look at this again here. Uh, we'll say an acetate buffer. An acetate buffer containing. Let me rewrite containing a little bit better. containing 2.6 molar acetic acid and uh, 0 0.26 molar sodium acetate, right? Uh, if the pKa is equal to 4.7 Six. Let's 
sorry, my mic turned off. Uh, if the pK is equal to 4.6, What's the pH? Uh, I don't need an ice table for this. All I need to know is Henderson Hasselbach. Henderson Hasselbach's equation says the pH is equal to the pKa plus the log of salt over acid. Well, the salt over acid. I have to decide which one of these is my salt, which one of these is my acid. Well, I know that this is my acetic acid. Here's my HA. This is my A minus. Well, look at the numbers. Look at these values. I got 2.6 and 0.26. Well, 0.26, if I multiply that by 10, right? So this is a 1 to 10 ratio. This ratio here is one part salt, ten parts acid. Well, I know what that is because I've memorized it. The log of one over ten is negative one. So this value here is negative one. If I know what my pKa is, 4.76 minus one, well, the pH of this is equal to 3.76. And I didn't even need a calculator. All I need to know are these or understand these ratios here. One to ten, ten to one, one to one. If I understand these ratios, there's no need for a calculator when we're calculating these calculations. Uh, let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at maybe one or two more of these. Um, How about we say um, trisglycine? Uh, trisglycine is a is a buffer used in in uh, um, biochem experiments. We are, we're always using tris trisglycine. So what if I ask you trisglycine? We'll say calculate the Calculate the concentration ratio of tris glycine, um, tris glycine to formate. So tris glycine to formate. Um, and I'll let you know that the, the formate is the salt. All right, formates a salt. Uh, this is going to be our acid. I wouldn't expect you guys to know that this is going to be our acid and salt. Uh, I, I'd let you know. Uh, and we'll say the buffer, so we'll say in this buffer system, we'll say the pH is equal to 8.06. Uh, we'll give you the Ka, the Ka of trisglycine. I'm just going to put tris. Uh, the Ka of Tris is 8.7 times 10 to the minus uh, 9. <clears throat> we can calculate the concentration. We are going to need a calculator, but the only reason we need a calculator is for the Ka, right? pH is equal to the pKa plus the log of this concentration over this concentration. Well, let's start getting some information. Because if I do a little math, I can, I can get the pKa. And I already know what the pH is. So let's see what the pKa is. The pKa is equal to the negative log of 8.7 times 10 to the minus 9. <clears throat> and that is going to be, so the pKa <clears throat> is equal to 8.06. 
the pKa is equal to 8.06. So if I write this out, I'm going to say 8.06 is equal to 8.06 plus the log of salt over acid. <clears throat> Can anyone tell me the ratio of acid or if of salt to acid? What is the ratio of salt to acid? One to one, perfect. It is a one to one ratio. That the ratio here, it has to be one over one. So it doesn't really matter um, how much I add, as long as I add it into one to one ratio of the same concentration. Right, so our ratio here, so the ratio is a one to one ratio. The ratio of salt to acid. Uh, let's do one. We're going to calculate the the ratio, or the yeah, we'll calculate the ratio again of a different one. So we'll use um, we'll say dihydrogen phosphate. So um, dihydrogen phosphate and hydrophosphate in blood. So we have dihydrogen phosphate right. <clears throat> Here I would expect you guys to know which one is my salt, which one is my acid, right? Uh, acids donate, right? So here, this is my acid. This is my base, or what we'll call a salt here. All right, so what is the ratio here? And I'll give you some information. We'll say uh, pH, pH of blood. And so, I mean, these, these are in our blood here. So we'll say pH is 7.4, uh, and I'll give you the Ka. The Ka is equal to 6.3 times 10 to the minus 8. <clears throat> so if we set up our, right, the pH is equal to the pKa plus the log of salt over acid. Well, let's see. <clears throat> what is our pKa? pKa is equal to 6.3 times 10 to the negative 8, 7.2. So our pKa is equal to 7.2. So our pH 7.4 is equal to 7.2 plus the log of Salt over acid, right? <clears throat> if we clean that up, right? 7.4. <clears throat> so we're going to have 0 0.2 is equal to the log of salt over acid. And how do we get rid of log, right? <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Let's see, what do we have here? Hold on, I got a, I got a phone call real quick. Hold on one second. Okay. Um, 
so here in order to get rid of this and and this is different this is this is not um how we get the concentrations right uh how we get the concentration of something we do uh like if we did this we say uh ph is equal to um uh, seven uh then we go 10 to the negative seven and that gives us the, the concentration uh equals concentration of h plus Right. Uh, this is not how we're going to this is not how we deal with this. Uh, once we have this information here, it is 10 to this value, 0 0.2. Right. 10 to that value is 0 0.2. And that's going to give us our ratio. So our ratio ends up being 1.6. So that's the answer we get. But what is the ratio of this? This is where you have to do a little bit of thinking here. You have to do a little bit of thinking because remember, this value here would give me something negative. This here would give me something positive. So just because I come out with 1.6, Oh, well, I need to have a ratio, a ratio that says, right, one value on this side, one value on this side, and all I have is 1.6. Well, if we take a look at 7.2 and this number got larger, that means that this value has to be positive. So the 1.6 is the ratio of salt to the ratio of acid, right? Because 1.6 over 1 is equal to just simply 1.6. That's very simple and basic math. So this is a ratio of 1.6 to 1. <clears throat> Had we changed it here, uh, and let's say Let's reverse the roles here, and let's say that our pH was equal to – I won't go that extreme. Let's say the pH is equal to 7.0. Right. So if it's equal to 7.0, uh, let's see. Will that even? Let me make sure that works. Yeah. <clears throat> so 7.0, um, and we set up the same way that they're going to have. Um, 7.0 is equal to 7.2 plus the log of salt to acid. Well, just from looking at this, because the pH decreases, I know that this is a negative value. I know that I'm going to have more acid than salt. I'm going to have more acid than salt. <clears throat> so we're not going to calculate that, uh, but you know, a question that you could be asked uh, potentially is to either calculate something like this, or I could just be asking you, uh, what's what's higher in concentration? Do I have more salt than acid, or do I um, or do I have more um, acid than salt? And depending if the pH increases, decreases from what the pKa is. <clears throat> Excuse me. As we would know, um, uh, let me let me do, and we're going to do just one more uh, item here, uh, using some similar values here. Um, so let's say our concentration of we use point five molar. Um, acetic acid. Point five molar acetic acid. Uh, 
and we have 5.0 molar acetate. Uh, we'll say that our pH is um, 8.3. What's the K? A. So can we figure out the Ka from this here? Yeah, we absolutely can. We go back to Henderson Hasselbach again. The pH is equal to the pKa plus the log of salt over the over acid. Well, we know what the pH is. The pH is equal to 8.3. So 8.3 is equal to the pKa plus the log of, well, I can tell from these numbers that this is a 10 to 1 ratio. I have 10 times more salt than I do acid. This is a 10 to 1 ratio that this value here is going to equal plus 1. Well, if I do the math now, we can say 7.3 is equal to the pKa. So we'll say plus 1 here. So my pKa is equal to 7.3. Well, here, if I want to know what the Ka value is, I can go 10 to the negative 7.3. 10 to the negative 7.3. There we go, 10 to the negative 7.3. And our Ka is equal to 5.0 times 10 to the minus eight. So again, potentially we could be dealing with calculations this way where we're trying to calculate the pKa instead of the pH. So we could be calculating ratios, we can calculate pKa values, Ka values, we can calculate pH values all from using Henderson Hasselbach's equation. They really didn't, I was kind of disappointed that they really didn't go into using this equation too much. So uh, I had to deter from it to make sure that we had a better understanding of that. Uh, and again, uh, I'm not going to go with any off the wall ratios uh, I, I'm for the exam uh, that I am strictly going to just, de you know, uh, look at ratios uh, here, right? So it'd be a 10 to 1 ratio, 1 to 10 ratio, or a 1 to 1 ratio. It's not going to be anything off the wall, you know, 2.5 to 1 or something like that. Uh, the, the ratios are going to be uh, here, you know, if asked a question regarding Henderson Hasselbach, uh, regarding these ratios, uh, is that I'm going to stick with these here 10 to 1, 1 to 10, 1 to 1 ratios uh, to help, you know, the understanding of the calculations make it a little bit better. But you could have uh, some calculations with a different ratio. Uh, yeah, we can have. Yeah, we just we just we did one like that where the ratio was not exactly one. Uh, that our ratio was one point six. Yeah. So for the exam, I wouldn't have a ratio like this. For the exam, I would I would make sure that the math would come out so that you would have either something that's ten to one or one to ten or one to one. Yeah. And on the last problem, why did um, Ka just became uh, 10 to the power of the 7.3? Uh, because this is how I could I could write this one. So so if if uh, let's say <clears throat> let's say the pH we'll go with pH. If my pH is seven, mm -hmm. well, how do I figure out? So and I'll. I'll say that, remember, so pH is equal to the negative log of H, right? Mm -hmm. So in order to figure out, if I asked you for the concentration of this, well, if this is the information, how would you calculate that out? You would say, oh, this is 10 to the minus 7. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right? So here, if I flip this around, what if I do this? I say if the pKa is equal to 7.3, just like the pH is equal to 7.3. Oh, then the K, okay. Right? How would you figure out H plus? Well, H plus is equal to 10 to the negative 7.3. 
what's the Ka? The Ka is equal to negative, uh, or I'm sorry, 10 to the negative 7.3. Okay. Does that help out? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have a question. Yes. So for the 0.5 and 5.0, how come it's 10 to 1 and not 1 to 10? Oh, let's see here. Um, so when we do, we do log of salt to acid, correct? Mm -hmm. So which one of these is my acid? The um, 0.5. The 0.5. 0.5 and the and the salt is 5.0. Oh, okay. So this is this is equal to 10 over 1. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do we see that now? Yeah, thank you. Okay, perfect. No problem. Yeah, uh, good question. Don't worry about. It. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's not the matter that I put it here. Because if if you if you're looking at it very linearly, then yeah, this looks like 0.5 over 5.0, but that's not the case. It's Identify your acid, identify your salt. And that's how we, we'd look at that, not just not just by how it's structured here. So yeah, no, really good question. Yeah, thank you for asking that. Uh, any other questions? All right, uh, if there's no other questions, this finishes up. Um, Unit uh, 14. Um, I think I skipped maybe, I, I'm not going to really talk about the very last portion of it. Uh, we're talking about, um, uh, what was it we're talking about? Oh, wait, you know what? No, no, no. I actually, you know what? I have one more. Oh, I think I do need to do this portion. Uh, hold on one second. Uh, I think we should do one more. Ice table. Uh, yeah, one more ice table. This because we we may come across this, um, so we'll just do one more ice table when we're talking about buffers, and we'll say what is uh, the pH of a solution. Because when we make buffers, sometimes we we just use a small acid, and then we have the conjugate base that occurs, but sometimes we, we already have the conjugate base and we mix those two solutions together. So what essentially happens is we have two initial concentrations instead of just one. So what happens if we have a solution and we'll say it's a 0.125 molar, uh, let's use methyl, methyl ammonia, methyl chloride, Methyl ammonium chloride. NH, um, so NH2. And then we have point, uh, we'll say point one three zero. To make it a little bit. Now we'll use one point three zero, that's fine. One point three zero, uh, and this is gonna be CH three N H three C L. I only put these here, so we, it, we we should be able to tell from here, uh, you know, which one the um, acid is, right? Uh, you know, because we see you know, if we're looking at, we have to relate this, right? This is a right. This is base. This is my conjugate acid. So, you know, you should know by now that ammonium is an acid. So here we would identify this one here as our uh, salt, or our, our, I'm sorry, our acid, and this uh, here would be considered our salt or our, our base. <clears throat> All right. So uh, let me give you the K. I'll give you the KB for this. So the KB is equal to 4.4 times 10 to the minus 4. All right. <clears throat> so here we can solve it um, like this. So uh, if we're looking at this reaction, so let me write the reaction down. Um, and we can say, if you're using that, uh, we'll start with CH3. 
NH2 plus H2O. Uh, we're going to get CH3, NH3 plus. I'm not worried about the specter to ion of chlorine, uh, but I am just going to be worried about this here. Yeah, that looks good. Um, then we'll make our ice table. And because we have two initial concentrations, uh, this concentration initial 0.125, we don't worry about water, and this is going to be 0 0.130, and then we don't have any of this base concentration just yet. And then we go minus x, plus x, plus x, and our equilibrium concentrations, 0.125 minus x, 0.130 plus x. So I think this is kind of the first time we've seen this here. And then we have, we figure out plus x here. So in order to figure out the pH, we need to get the acid concentration. In order to figure out pH, we need to figure out the concentration of this. Or uh, I always, just as a reminder, they're interchangeable here. So we have to figure out this concentration in order to figure out the pH. And so in order to do that, we're going to figure out the OH concentration first. Right? So as we set this up, I did give you guys the KB. Um, and I'll write it down again. So our KB equals uh, 4.4 times 10 to the minus 4. So we'll write 4.4 uh, times 10 to the minus 4 is equal to 0.130. Oh, and because look at this, so so our KB is a lot less than one. So I'm just going to ignore the minus plus x here. So we'll put 0 0.130 times x over 0.125, and x is equal to. Four point two times ten to the minus four. So that is <clears throat> X, which means that we have now identified the concentration of OH. So OH concentration is equal to four point two times ten to the minus four. Well, let's go ahead and take the negative log of that. So negative log of 4.2 times 10 to the minus 4. This is equal to 3.4. So then we can use this formula here. pH is equal to 14 minus 3.4. And this is equal to 10.6. So our pH is equal to 10.6. And isn't that wonderful that we can calculate that using an ice table and two initial concentrations? But is it necessary? No, it's not necessary. You, you're going to find out, uh, if you haven't already, that there are different ways to calculate solutions. Would this calculate the solution? It absolutely would. Is it the only way to calculate this pH? No, it's not. It is not the only way. Because I have two initial concentrations, it's not that I have one initial concentration, but I actually have both of them. With both of these concentrations, well, why don't we use Henderson-Hasselbach and say pH is equal to the pKa plus the log of salt concentration over acid concentration. I only, I, I only have the Kb. The Kb is equal to 4.4 times 10 to the minus 4, but we've seen this before. How do I get the Ka, right? Let's not forget, Kw is equal to the Ka times the Kb. 
Well, we know what the KW is. I've drilled it in your guys' head, 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14. And if I divide that by the KB, 4.4 times 10 to the minus 4, this is equal to the KA. So RKA is equal to 2.3 times 10 to the minus 11 equal to the KA. So now I have the KA. Well, how do we get the PKA? Well, I take negative log of the KA. So if I take the negative log, so we'll, I'll put PKA. The PKA is equal to the negative log of 2.3 times 10 to the minus 11 and the pKa of 2.3 times 10 to the minus 11 uh, is 10.6. So now we have the pKa here. So now we can plug all these values in and we can say that the pH is equal to 10.6 plus the log of salt, 0.125 over acid, 0 0.130. And what is that value? Well, let's take the log of 0.125 divided by 0.130. And this is equal to 0 0.017033. 10.6 minus 0 0.017033 is still, I'm going to round it, it's like 10.58, but I can still round it to 10.6. Right, and there it is, pH is equal to 10.6 by using Henderson Hasselbach. Or you can use an ice table. Uh, regardless, we're still gonna get the same answer. Regardless, we still get the same answer. All right, so I think the only thing that I'm not gonna be talking about in this chapter is just gonna be the indicators. Um, you know, I really don't see, you know, yeah, I'm just not going to talk about indicators here. Uh, that there is a um, in your textbooks. Let's see if we can find it here. It's around seven. You know, these are all our indicators. The, the reason why we use indicators is uh, um, indicators, we talked about this 1 to 10, 10 to, I guess I should mention it a little bit. We, we talked about this 1 to 10 and this 10 to 1 ratios. Well, that's how these indicators work, right? Is that color change uh, for what we call indicators Color chains for indicators require a 1 to 10 or a 10 to 1 ratio, right? Because beyond that, we're really going outside. We're really going outside of this buffer capacity, right? That here we talked about this buffer, this buffer region here. And this 1 to 10, 10 to ratio really takes us out of that range. So when we're looking at color changes here, uh, if you've taken Chem 100, uh, you've used phenolphthalein. Um, that's the one that goes from like, uh, you'll see the pH between 8 and 10, and it's that white to pinkish area, so phenolphthalein. So once we titrate our, our acid base, is that, you know, it ends up being in this color change. So it doesn't turn 
pink until that pH gets to around nine. Okay. Um, so on how we decide, well, how, you, how do you know which indicator to use? Because you'll see we have a, a whole bunch of, of indicators, and it really be, depends on your titrant. If we go back to this crude image here, is that here, w whatever's in the burette is considered the titrant. That's what's going to do the titrating. So if I have a base <clears throat> as the titrant, uh, I'm going to want to pick something that's above 7. If I have an acid as the titrant, I'm going to want to pick something that's below 7. So it really just depends on the strength of that titrant. right? Uh, if I was going to use pure sodium hydroxide, um, pure potassium hydroxide, like concentrated, uh, I'd probably go with al alazarin yellow. Uh, if I'm going to dilute the concentration a little bit, you know, then I'd use some phenylthalein because the, con the pH isn't going to be that high, right? Uh, if I'm using hydrochloric acid, uh, boom, I'll use crystal violet. You know, if that's my titrant, I'm going to use crystal violet. If I've diluted that, um, hydrochloric acid, uh, maybe I'll go with some thymol blue. Maybe I'll go with uh, cresyl red. Maybe, you know, depending on, on the concentration, depending on the pH of that acid or base. So depending on the acid or, or base, right? So if my, if my, uh, if the pH of my uh, acid um, is, you know, three and a half, Okay, well, if that's the acid, uh, I need something, you know, maybe around three and a half that I'll use bromophenol blue. Maybe I'll, well, maybe I'll use some methyl orange, but I think I'd probably go with bromophenol blue if I know, or some dinitrophenol if that's the pH. If the pH of my sodium hydroxide is, you know, I don't know, nine and a half, uh, I'll use thymol thaline. I'll use phenyl thaline, one or the other, you know. Um, so that's how we select these here. Uh, it's based on the titrant. So how you pick these indicators, and the indicators do change color. They're all clear initially. Oh, sorry about that. So they're all clear initially. All, all, the, all the indicators are clear until they've reached that specific pH, right? And once it reaches a, a a ratio of 10 to 1 or 1 to 10 is when we'll see that color change uh, in that. But we're not going to do any calculations with it. Uh, we're just kind of an overview of, of what those uh, indicators are. Uh, other than that, uh, I'll get these uploaded. Um, I'll get the notes uploaded. Uh, and as soon as the uh, video is done rendering, I'll go ahead and uh, get that. Um, and upload that as well. So let me stop the recording on that.